until they, they pushed the final frontier, the first man to walk on the moon was Neil Armstrong, his roots were in County Fermanagh, and you can't get much further than that the way of frontiers these days. Um, and there were frontiers men and frontiers women. Sometimes history is written from a male point of view, um, but there were a lot of, of ladies in Ulster Scots history, not as well documented, but equally as important. Um, Elizabeth Hutchinson, if you go to the Wax Hall and you see her memorial statue, it tells you she's from Larne and County Antrim in Ireland. And it gives you a lot of quotes about her. A very, very determined woman. Um, and she had enormous influence on Andrew Jackson as, as he uh, grew and as, as he then, without her, headed towards the presidency. There's lots of others of them as well that played a part in the American Revolution in different ways, nurses and scouts and all the rest. Um, these are people who, at certain historical points, are needed. Um, and that's, I think, one of the great things about the Ulster Scots. Um, they're probably better, I suspect, they're better in opposition than they are anywhere else, because they are dissenters by nature, and they're always better at being contrary to what is the established idea. Um, and I think history sort of shows that. And maybe that's our place in society. Maybe it's our place in society to question things and to ask is it the right thing and, and is that the way things should be. But whatever it is, we have in America gone beyond that and, and gone to the White House as a people. And we can be very proud of that. And there's a whole big list of presidents beyond the ones from, from this area. There's lots of others as well. There's uh, Thomas Polk. And the interesting thing is that all of these men have some connection with each other. Uh, the Jacksons and the Polks have connections. If you go to the Polk Museum in North Carolina, there's a letter there from Sam Houston and Texas to the Polks. Um, so they didn't have a, a, a sort of a, a caucus, I don't think. But I think that what they did have was a, a love of education. And that love of education, they believed that education was the salvation for the next generation. That those like Andrew and Elizabeth Jackson, the education they didn't have, Andrew Jackson could get. And Andrew Jackson could raise to the White House he says I've gone on far too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. He didn't say that. He maybe meant it, but I'm going to give you a message. In a minute. There'll be tea in five minutes for everybody. <laughs> so education was very important to them, and because education was so important to them, the first buildings put up in their settlements was the church and the school and the stockade or the fort on the frontiers. And sometimes the school and the church were the same thing. I think, as a community, we have lost that sense today, and I think as a community. We need to address that because we'll be the community that will destroy all that if we don't go back to the idea of education. Because we have a lot of we have a lot of young people today. I wonder how many young people out in Lauren on Monday will know what the twelfth is all about. I wonder how many of them have been taught in school anything about it. Um, and I wonder how many of them know from home much about it either. And there's an awful lot that don't. Um, now, if we don't get a grasp, but we used to be the, the people who were fundamentally were interested in education. But I was told a few years ago, whenever they were talking about the big Springfield campus on the, on the Falls Road, the Shannon Road, the, the university people went to both communities and they talked to them about all they were planning to do. And on, on the Falls Road, they were asking them about the courses that there would be and the qualifications that would be. And on the Shankill Road, they were asking them about jobs for cleaners. And that's the truth of the matter. Now, we have come a long way if we're interested in jobs for cleaners when we should be looking at how we get better educated for the next generation. So those are important things. Um, I think I've probably <coughs> said enough. <coughs> um, we are a people who, who flourish and grow, despite anything that's thrown against us. And, and we in the, in the Orange Institution know there's a lot been thrown against us over 30 years and still been thrown at us. Um, but you know, no matter what happens, um, we're still around. And our halls are still there, and our parades are still there, and our lodges are still there. And in the 19th century, parades were banned, and there was a time when people had to meet in their orange halls. You know, the orange order survived. We'll survive no matter what happens, um, <coughs> and we will still be around. And part of the reason is that tenacity, that Ulster Scots spark within the institution is there too. The majority, just a slight majority of members are Ulster Scots or Presbyterians within the orange order today. But I think these, these traits of Ulster Scots go way beyond 
one single community, they extend into our whole community, whether we're Presbyterian or Church of Ireland or Methodist or whatever we are. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that uh, in the context of Orangeism, there's an author called Gary Dennis, and he wrote a book about Muscoda County in Ontario. Uh, he's not an orange man, his father was an orange man, and he decided to do a history of all the orange villages that used to belong there. Most of them closed down. And he made the point that although the hall was closed, and although the lodge was gone, the essential ethos of Orangeism was in that community still, and was continuing on down the line, because of what had been taught by the lodges way back, generations back. Um, that's, I think, very similar. The ethos of Ulster Scots has permeated into the wider community. Um, it involves many, many more people than just Presbyterians today. I'm going to leave you um, just with a, because a lot of people are very despondent sometimes. They think about America, um, and they say, you know, what about Ar these Irish Americans? You know, they're all, they're always, they're all over the place, and they're always um, making a comment about dear old Ireland and what it should be like and where's our community and the answer is our community is out there okay first thing is our community is an American community they fought for America and they won America and they're an American community but the other thing is they're out there and if you make contact with them they're more than receptive to our community and we just need rather than asking what they're doing for us it's time that we started figuring out how we are going to make the contacts with them and develop the links and the friendships with them that have all but been forgotten over the years. It's our responsibility. It's not their responsibility. It's ours to do that. And the receptiveness is there. I went into a, a shop in the state of Georgia in a reenactment um, camp one time. And I was looking for a baseball cap. And he says to me, this guy, he says, where are you from? And I says, I'm from Northern Ireland. He says, you'll be wanting an orange baseball cap then. Now, how in the backwoods of Georgia that man knew, I don't know. But here's another one. I should have worn this cap when I come in tonight. Clemson University, South Carolina, they're called the Orange Men. And it's nothing to do with orange trees either. So just remember that we have a lot of friends there, but we need to make our links with our friends again very often. But we have a great history and a great, uh, we should have a great pride in the history that we have. And um, whenever, those of you that are, are walking on, on Monday, you can walk with pride because of all these things. Not just the Ulster Scots, but everything as a community that we have done and have achieved. And maybe the biggest achievement of all, but against all the odds, has been our survival as a community. So keep that in mind. Your tea should be ready. I hope I haven't gone on too long. Thank you very much.